Hey folks, Mark Levin here. Now, before we dive in today's episode, I want to talk about something truly valuable, protecting your financial future with gold. It's called diversification. Now for that, I only trust Advantage Gold. They're the real deal with five-star service and a sterling reputation. So give them a call today. Call Advantage Gold at 800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Trust me, you'll thank yourself in the future. Now let's get to the show. Results may vary. Consult with your financial professional. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from the underground command post. Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker. Somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building. We've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. This is the best of the Mark Levin Show. Happy Independence Day. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. By the way, it is COVID. But I'm feeling better. The medicine they came out with is pretty good. So I'm feeling about 70%. But I'm at 70%. That's 150% for most people, don't you think? And this is why I want to thank our affiliates. I want to thank Sirius Satellite. I want to thank all the platforms who carry this program. Because the insight that you and I discuss and provide on these cases, on the Republic, on the country, the Constitution, we're able to weave them into what's taking place in America so uniquely, not because of me per se, but because this is what we do. This is who we are. We're not paint by the numbers. I don't come to this as a person who spent 50 years in 15 different radio markets. I come to this as a person who started in the biggest market in America, New York, because of the power of our message the listenership and so forth spread throughout the country. So let's get started. Some of what I'm about to say you've already heard, because I spoke on Fox, but you haven't heard it the way I do it here on radio. This immunity issue came up early on. President Trump's lawyer said we have a right to immunity. Period. As a president... Period. Why? Because the president cannot function otherwise. The position of the government, that is the Biden administration, officially the Department of Justice and their unconstitutional prosecutor, Jack Smith, was we can prosecute a sitting president or a retired president, even for things they did while president. Now, to be honest with yourselves, if you're honest with yourselves, we're not going to go back and get the video and audio. Almost every legal analyst said that the Trump position is nonsensical. Nonsensical. Slowly but surely, they began to make the case that, well, Smith was too extreme, too. 
But they said that the court will, will handily and quickly reject Trump's arguments. And then came the oral argument. Well, many of the justices weren't so quick to do that. Not that they were embracing all of the Trump lawyers' arguments, but they were embracing the idea that you would damage the presidency. The institution of the presidency, the constitution and separation of powers. Many of these legal analysts, some of whom are professors and former professors on other networks, we're still at it. But I do, Mr. Producer and I, and others in my crew and staff and at Fox and at Blaze, we, we kind of laugh. Because the positions I take are positions based not on ideology. They're based on the Constitution. And how can the Constitution function? in a republic. And so on Fox, as one of the few, maybe the only, I don't know, I don't watch it 24-7, but I said, this is not a frivolous, a frivolous challenge by the Trump people. I condemned what Chunkin had done, the district judge. I condemned the three-judge panel who took about seven days to dismiss this and gave the Trump lawyers, a truncated period of time to even file an appeal. I warned you about Chunkin. I warned you about Circuit Judge Pond, P-A-N. She's a Biden appointee, Chunkin Obama. And I told you that these are dangerous people. As is the Attorney General in the United States, as is the special counsel, that they're going to destroy the Constitution if they get their way. I've also made the point that this pursuit of Trump by the Department of Justice and through this specific prosecutor is an attack on at least half a dozen parts of the United States Constitution. The most important part is separation of powers. But it is an attack on the appointments clause of the Constitution which has now been seriously challenged. And if you read Justice Thomas's concurring opinion with the majority, which nobody's discussed on any network, including Fox, I mentioned it briefly, he embraces the fact that there's been a challenge to the actual appointment of the prosecutor, mentioning Meese, mentioning the landmark brief, and so forth. Seems to me, whether that is formally brought up or not, it is a very important point. So we have the Appointments Clause, separation of powers. When you look at this case and the Florida case, the First Amendment with this gag order nonsense, due process under the Fifth Amendment, And the right to competent counsel under the six with the attack on attorney-client privilege that took place in the district court in Washington, D.C. Questions raised about the sufficiency of the search warrant that led to the FBI SWAT team. Of course, questions to come about presidential declassification, but even questions about the use of classified information in an open courtroom. I can tell you from my own experience as Chief of Staff to an Attorney General, Edwin Meese, in the Reagan administration, of the, the reason a lot of these big spy cases with these American spies who spied mostly for the Soviet Union deserved the death penalty but didn't get it was because our Constitution requires, to the fullest extent possible, public trials for reasons you can understand. And so the issue of what classified information can be used at that public trial was so daunting and so complex that we tended to negotiate for life sentences because we didn't want to reveal the classified information, which kind of defeated the point, right? That's not so. In this case with Donald Trump. What, Jack? 
Smith is saying, just so you know, as a side point, in Florida is he wants as little classified information as possible, even shared with the defense, because they can't be trusted. So how are you supposed to have a trial of any kind? And Trump's not going to plead to crap. But all these, all these efforts, in the January 6th case, the documents case, Attacking all of these these aspects of the constitutions, raising these questions, most of them, for the first time ever. And then demanding that the courts move quickly. This guy Smith went to the Supreme Court on immunity, said we need to act quickly. They said, no, we don't. They ruled against him unanimously. This guy goes to Judge Cannon's courtroom. He sits there, tries to stare her down. His subordinates treat her with disrespect. The media treats her with disrespect. She's doing exactly what you're supposed to do. She's got serious motions that are filed, and unlike Judge Chunkin, she's reading them. She's saying these are serious constitutional questions. Some of them questions of first impression. I've got to deal with them. Chunkin didn't do that, the Obama judge. She just rubber stamping, and she was utterly incompetent in the way she even responded to these, including the obstruction charges. And let's get to immunity now. What does the Supreme Court, excuse me, what does the Constitution of the United States say about presidential immunity? Nothing directly. And yet they did debate the issue of how do you deal with a president who violates not just criminal laws, they didn't have a criminal code at the time, but who violates even more broadly and more importantly societal norms, undermines the civil society. In other words, does grave damage to the country itself. And so they created the impeachment clause. Indicting a sitting president. There was some generalized discussion. But they came up with impeachment. They didn't invent it on their own. They looked at what the British were doing with impeachment, and then they stylized it for an American small-R Republican constitutional system, understanding they wanted separation of powers. Power, as I say over and over again, power competing against power. That's what they wanted. They're worried about tyranny in many forms. Tyranny of a centralized government, They didn't want to create a president who was a monarch. On the other hand, they didn't want a mobocracy, tyranny of the legislature. The American Revolution overlapped the French Revolution. They wanted nothing to do with mobocracy and pure democracy. They wanted nothing to do with monarchy, and today we call it dictatorship, centralized power. And so they took Montesquieu's words from the spirit of the laws, Power checking power. Mixed government. Aristotle talked about a mixed government. He certainly wasn't the only one. John Locke talked about potential of three branches competing against each other, but he didn't detail it. Montesquieu did. A legislative, a judicial, an executive. Just a couple pages in a well over thousand page book. Turned out to be a book. And as I've told you before, he was the most important philosopher during the constitutional period. The most important philosopher during the revolutionary period was John Locke. But it was Montesquieu for these purposes, and he cited a few times in the Federalist Papers. And he cited specifically for this, separation of powers. Something very perverse that nobody talks about, but it's true. 
And I'll get to the nub of this case in a minute. The Department of Justice obviously didn't exist when the Constitution was ratified. There weren't U.S. attorneys, there weren't federal prosecutors, let alone special prosecutors. On the one hand, the executive branch is considered a unitary branch. What does that mean? It's the presidential branch. He's the executive. He's the commander-in-chief. He is the executive branch. And yet, you can have the executive branch, that is, people with inferior powers, investigating the head of the executive branch. See what I'm saying, Mr. Producer? So you literally have subordinates investigating the constitutional unitary head of the executive branch. And so we as a uh, society, but government more particularly, have struggled with this. They've come up with an independent counsel act, the special prosecutors, and so forth and so on. It would be bizarre in the extreme if an inferior officer of the executive branch had the power to indict the head of the executive branch for official powers that he's exercising as president of the United States. Do you see what I'm saying? Maybe I'm getting too philosophical. All right, I'm going to get to the nub of this in a minute. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Folks, the war on our justice system, the vicious assault on President Trump has sent our nation into uncharted waters. And trust me when I say things are going to get worse before they get better. I truly believe that. The political turmoil and uncertainty that lie ahead could have severe consequences for our economy and financial markets. But in times of crisis, there's always opportunity. And right now, I see that opportunity in diversification with gold and silver. As these tensions rise and the dollar's future becomes increasingly uncertain, gold has the potential to go even higher. That's why I trust Advantage Gold. They're experts at helping Americans take steps to help safeguard their wealth with precious metals. Call them right now. 800 900 8000. Don't wait. Get their free 2024 gold and silver kit, plus a special Mark Levin discount worth up to $1,300 if you qualify. The future may be unpredictable, but your financial security doesn't have to be. So call Advantage Gold right now. 800 900 8000. There's no risk, there's no pressure. That's 800 900 8000. Get your special Mark Levin discount worth up to $1,300 for qualified customers today. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. This is Mark Levin wishing you a happy 4th of July. Now back to the best of me. All right, immunity. What's immunity? More than 50 years ago, more than half a century ago, I got one minute? Okay. I'll explain this after the one minute. And I'll explain it in a way that I've discussed some time ago, but is not being discussed now. But it's very, very important. What the Democrats are arguing for today is the crippling of the executive branch after Biden leaves office. In other words, do anything you have to do to get Trump. Any way you have to do it, just do it. The candidate we have is, in fact, a half-wit. He's got dementia. We worry that he can't win. They're up to their antics today. I'll get to that in a minute. Biden's going to give a speech at 745 to try and change the subject. And I'll be right back. My fellow Americans, the phony conviction of Donald Trump has sent a clear message. Our country is in deep trouble. Our rule of law is under attack, and the integrity of our elections may well be in jeopardy. In times of political chaos like this, it's crucial to protect your wealth and secure your financial future. 
That's where my good friends at Advantage Gold come in. Please call them now. 800-900-8000. Get their free 2024 gold and silver kit to help protect your money against times like these with physical precious metals. Plus, tell them I sent you and they'll give you a special Mark Levin discount worth up to $1,300 if you qualify. No one can predict the future, but you can prepare for it. Call Advantage Gold today, 800-900-8000. Get your free gold and silver kit right now. Plus, Mark Levin discount worth up to $1,300 for qualified customers today. 800-900-8000. Give it a try. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professionals. You're listening to the best of the Mark Levin Show. Happy Independence Day. All right, here we go. It's been the official position of the Department of Justice for more than half a century that it cannot indict a sitting president for, among other reasons, it would essentially decapitate the executive branch. Moreover, that those involved in such a process the indictment and so forth, grand jury, prosecutor, judge, or not hold such power over a president who is elected by the entire nation. Now, I have argued in part that the immunity issue flows from this. That is, if a president knows he can be indicted for his official acts by a subsequent administration, that is, after he leaves office, it would cripple his ability to exercise his constitutional duties. Because in the end, the issue isn't resolved on whether the act is criminal or not per se until the indictment occurs and there's a trial. So he would have to wonder whether a quick decision or a difficult decision or a decision that seemed right at the time when he was president would be subjected to criminal scrutiny after the fact and after he left office the presidency would be gravely damaged yet that was the position of the Department of Justice that is the Biden administration and Jack Smith Now, this would have fundamentally altered separation of powers by greatly weakening the office of the presidency. It would have effectively amended the Constitution through criminal prosecution. No longer would there be the balance and the division among the branches that the framers worked so hard to enshrine in our Constitution. The weakest branch, by far, would be the executive branch. The January 6th case is the first of its kind. Ever. It was built on three statutes having nothing to do with the events of January 6th. All the talk of insurrection. But there was no charge involving the insurrection statute. All the talk of, sit, of a sedition or conspiracy. But those charges weren't brought either. Because the object, the target of the prosecutor, didn't commit those crimes. So he had to look around. Rather than shut the case right there and say, okay, there's no insurrection, there's no sedition. There's nothing to prosecute here. That's not what Jack Smith did. That's not what the Department of Justice did. That's not what the Biden administration did. They went through and they looked at all the statutes they could. They went through the criminal code and they found three, they thought. Which they believed they could creatively massage, fashion, and take facts that they creatively massage and fashion and apply one to the other. Which is why the indictment itself is what they call a talking indictment. 
In other words, it goes on and on and on, rather than just lay out a concise case. There is no concise case. So you have Section 1512 of the Criminal Code. The Saxby-Oakley Act, or what I call the Enron Act. To keep it simple, what Enron did when it knew it had huge problems, it's, it began massively destroying documents with the expectation that there'd be congressional oversight and investigations. That's why when you read the statute, the plain language of the, language, language of the statute is focused exclusively on documents, the destruction of evidence, that sort of thing as obstruction, and then at the end it talks about, or otherwise, the word, but or otherwise applies to the facts that were involved in Enron, and the law, the Enron law, it had nothing to do with January 6th. It had nothing to do with the protests or even the violence that took place on January 6th. Nothing but they didn't have any other obstruction statute. So they used it. Jack Smith picked it up from the U.S. Attorney's Office in Washington that had been applying it to one protester after another and used it against President Trump as two of his four charges. But what did President Trump do to obstruct a proceeding? Even his public statements about peaceful and so forth. Now, his administration, he has every right to talk to the vice president about what he should do, as the court noted today, or what he felt he should do and so forth. But that's irrelevant. It's not obstruction. So the court, by six to three, said no to obstruction. And then we have clever legal analysts who say, well, Jack Smith, you know, he could say that this document was written and find some kind of documentary evidence that he didn't. You see what I mean? You're talking about a past president, the leading candidate for president, in one of the major parties in America, and they're looking like scoundrels for something, anything. That's not the way this is supposed to work. But that's only way Jack Smith knows how to practice law. So we have those two. Okay, now there's two other statutes left, two other charges. What are they? One of them is a statute that is used to prosecute federal contractors who on their own are conspired to rip off the government. Fraud. Jack Smith took that and said, well, what Donald Trump was saying publicly and urging, whether it's in Arizona or Michigan or elsewhere, was fraud. Fraud. What? That has nothing to do with that statute either. In fact, that statute could be used against virtually any politician who challenges any election. It's crazy. Well, what's the other statute? The other statute is the 1871, some say 1872, but it began in 1871, what they called the Ku Klux Klan Act. It was a civil rights law that was passed To stop the Klan from preventing newly freed black slaves from voting. And it's been amended since to protect the right of people to vote. January 6th had nothing to do with the right of people to vote. And yet that's one of the charges. So you look at these, these obstruction, two counts. Federal contractors, statute as I call it, the Klan statute as I call it, this is what they brought. And so you're supposed to take this case, so irresponsible, so outrageous, they cobble this together and destroy presidential immunity 
to try and reach Donald Trump when he was president. And so Donald Trump's lawyers went to the Supreme Court and said, wait a minute. These were acts he took while he was president. The district court dismissed out of hand what Trump lawyers argued. The three-judge panel in the circuit court in D.C., faster, within a week, said, no, nope, you lose. And by the way, you got one week to appeal. They didn't even take any time with it. Why? Because they know the deal. This has to get done before the election. We have an imbecile running for president on the Democrat side. You've heard what he said. That Donald Trump is Hitler, effectively. Okay. The Supreme Court gets it, and what happens? Jack Smith says, okay, this is crucial, Supreme Court. We need to resolve this quickly. Uh, We ask you to take this up as an emergency case and put everything else aside and resolve it. And the court, in a unanimous response, says, no, we're not going to do that. Why? And I know what they're thinking. Just because you have the election calendar on your list as a federal prosecutor, which you're not supposed to, it's a serious matter. We're going to take it seriously. We're going to have a oral argument. We're going to go through the motions here. That's what you do. On a case of first impression, that involves a major constitutional issue that could destroy the construct of the federal government. They took up the case. They had their oral argument. The position of the government was utterly and completely unsound. Almost irrational. I just want you to remember the legal analysts said the same thing about the Trump lawyer argument, which was, we have complete immunity. And why did they argue that? Because in the past, no former president has ever been indicted, number one. Number two, for anything associated to when they were president, official or not. Well, the court said that goes a little too far for us in its decision today. They said, look, Solomon couldn't cut the baby in half, and he wouldn't have. That wouldn't have been very wise, and we're not either. Here's what we're going to do. A president cannot be indicted while he's president. He has full immunity for his official duties. That's number one. Okay, Just so you know, that's the first time the court has ever said that. Because it's never had to say anything before. Jack Smith, Merrick Garland, Joe Biden, Judge Chunkin, the three blind dummies on the circuit court, they brought the court to the point where it had to make some decision. They said that's number one. Number two, as you heard during our argument, this issue of what is official conduct versus non-official conduct. We can't assume, based on the record presented to us here on the Supreme Court, that that's been resolved. Just because a prosecutor puts in his papers a bunch of facts that says it's the case, and just because a district judge says, okay, I agree, just because the three-judge panel in Washington, D.C., the circuit court panel, said, not only do we agree, we agree with an exclamation mark. Now hurry up and get this done. We're not going to take that as serious, professional, legitimate adjudication? So what did they say? They said, look, there are obviously occasions when a president can take actions that have nothing to do with his job as president. And you heard the list of preposterous hypothetical Idiocy coming out of Sotomayor and the others. SEAL Team 6. This will become infamous. Should be on an epithet when the day comes. Because it's so damn stupid. But I'll get to that in a minute. So the court said, look, you're a trial judge. We're up here high, up here. We got these cases, these constitutional matters, legal matters. We've got matters involving uh, jurisdictional questions, which state has authority questions, antitrust questions, all kinds of questions. 
damn it, you do your job down there and you conduct a hearing, an evidentiary hearing, you, mini trial, whatever you want to do. And you tell us what you conclude and back it up. Because they didn't say this, but I will. We know it'll be back up here. So do your damn job. And you, circuit court, you're a joke. They didn't say it, but they almost did. And so the new test is a presidential action. That is, an action by a man or a woman who's president will be presumed. It's presumptively official unless proven otherwise. So that's the standard. It's a brilliant standard. Brilliant. Nobody criticizes this court more than I do, or many of the justices. This is a brilliant decision. And so now they have to do that. People are trying to read the tea leaves from Barrett, who goes off, and the others. Well, what about the elector? She said this. She's one justice. And what about that? It's not what about. The system is intact. Separation of powers in the Constitution are intact. There's a process now in place. The Constitution won today. When we come back, the responses. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. The war against Donald Trump, which is ongoing, has turned our legal and political system into a nightmare. With the 2024 elections on the horizon, we could be facing a period of unprecedented instability and uncertainty. But you can protect and grow your wealth by investing in gold and silver. Precious metals have always served as a safe haven during times of political and economic turmoil. And with the expert guidance of my good friends at Advantage Gold, you can navigate this insane climate with confidence. Call Advantage Gold right now, 800 900 8000. They'll send you a free 2024 gold and silver kit that tells you how to help keep your money safe when things are bad. Plus, tell them I sent you, and they'll give you a special Mark Levin discount worth up to $1,300 if you qualify. Call Advantage Gold, 800-900-8000. Get your special Mark Levin discount worth up to $1,300 for qualified customers. That's 800-900-8000. Performance may vary. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. This is Mark Levin wishing you a happy 4th of July. Now back to the best of me. Turns out, America, that uh, Joe Biden is going to give a speech. At what time? 7.45 Eastern Time. Wants to make sure it's prime time on the Supreme Court's immunity decision. So this is very obvious. What they're trying to do, folks, is change the subject The guy, at least, is fairly competent, not completely, in reading the teleprompter. He will talk about the rule of law, the threat to democracy, the right-wingers on the court, how if you elect Trump and you don't elect him, there'll be more right-wingers on the court. This is exactly what he's going to do. Try and change the subject. The media will run with this. The media who demanded his head 24 hours ago will now soothe him, massage him, and give him a wet kiss. You watch. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship. Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. This is the best of the Mark Levin Show. Happy Independence Day. I want to remind you, America, Mark Levin here, of what Joe Biden said. What was the date, Rich? May 31st, soon after the horrendous Stalinist star chamber in Manhattan. And I'm sure the Democrats and their media will do everything they can 
to try and draw a, an equivalency between the criticism of that and yet the support for the method in which the Supreme Court ruled as if they're the same thing. One's a star chamber, and the other is the United States Supreme Court that acted like the United States Supreme Court. There is a difference, but not to the Democrats. The ends justify the means. But I want to remind you of what Joe Biden said, and I think we'll take it live, Mr. Producer, when Biden speaks, okay? Not because I believe in water torturing you folks, particularly at dinner time in some parts of the country, but because I need to respond to it. Here's what he said a little less than two months ago. Go. Good afternoon. Before I begin my remarks, I just want to say a few words about what happened yesterday in New York City. The American principle that no one is above the law was reaffirmed. Donald Trump was given every opportunity to defend himself. It was a state case, not a federal case. And it was heard by a jury of 12 citizens, 12 Americans, 12 people like you, like millions of Americans who served on juries. This jury is chosen the same way every jury in America is chosen. It was a process that Donald Trump's attorney was part of. The jury heard five weeks of evidence, five weeks. And after careful deliberation, the jury reached a unanimous verdict. They found Donald Trump guilty on all 34 felony counts. Now he'll be given the opportunity, as he should, to appeal that decision, just like everyone else has that opportunity. That's how the American system of justice works. And it's reckless. It's dangerous. It's irresponsible for anyone to say this was rigged just because they don't like the verdict. Our justice system has endured for nearly 250 years. And it literally is the cornerstone of America, our justice system. The justice system should be respected, and we should never allow anyone to tear it down. It's as simple as that. That's America. That's who we are. And that's who we'll always be, God willing. Here comes Biden. He will tell us what to think about the Supreme Court immunity decision. The guy who graduated near the bottom of his law school class and who has dementia. And needs to distract the nation with fear-mongering. Can you imagine he will burp? Just doing this off the top of my head. Another Trump term in which more radical justices will be appointed. And they and Trump will further endanger our democracy from Roe v. Wade to immunity. Pretty good so far, Mr. Producer. Trump is not above the law. Typing this as a, no one is above the law. And that's pretty much how it will go. Pretty much how it will go. And then I will address him. Because in fact, you want to know the truth? He's of two minds on this decision. Number one, he feels now that he is less likely to be prosecuted for his crimes in office. The deaths, the assaults, property damage as a result of his illegal immigration policies such as they are. No question about it, in my view, among other things. And so, in some ways, he'll feel better about it. But he won't reveal that to you. So the administration, the Department of Justice, the unconstitutional prosecutor, who has attacked separation of powers, who's attacked attorney-client privilege, who's attacked presidential authority, In so many ways. The First Amendment, the Fifth, the Sixth, the Eighth, the Fourteenth. We will be lectured by that president about the rule of law. 
about the rule of law. You know, I think right now, for now, I'm in the right place at the right time. Don't you think so, Mr. Producer, with all this going on? With the most lawless administration in American history, pretending that it's the most law-abiding, law-supporting, law-enforcing administration in American history. This is how the Marxists work. You understand that, right? This is how the propagandists work. Biden is accomplished at one thing. He's a demagogue. He's the most accomplished demagogue in half a century. First, he was a white supremacist, racist, segregationist. Now he's the great white hope. Will save black people and other minorities from Donald Trump. Before he would save democracy from Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan couldn't stand him. Said as much in his diary. He called him a demagogue. Now he will save democracy from Donald Trump. As he's always destroying democracy. With unconstitutional executive orders. He's hoping he can now run against the Supreme Court. Further deteriorating and undermining that institution. Because he doesn't care. Like he doesn't care about the border and all the deaths and mayhem. To change the subject. And you watch how fast the New York Times kicks into gear. Joy Reid has already kicked into gear. She should be wearing a neck brace. She's turned her head so fast. The conga line at CNN and MSNBC who wanted to get rid of Biden and to find somebody, anybody who could defeat Trump. We got to defeat Trump. They pulled back today. Oh, yeah. Mika Brzezinski, who was admonished by Joe. Now she will be the one admonishing Joe. I want you to see how fast this occurred. From Thursday night. Until today. It started actually yesterday on Sunday. When they started to hit the brakes, at least tap the brakes. Because what was obvious is what I told you. Here, on Levin TV, and on Fox, two nights in a row on the weekend. Joe Biden controls 99% of the delegates. He's not, he's not giving them up. And the power behind the throne is Jill Biden. She's the Edith Wilson. The Edith Wilson of our generation. She's running the White House. She's in charge. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for history because we don't have a real media that gives a damn about it. In fact, they, they help protect her, Praetorian Guard. You will go on about Roe and the student, maybe even the student loan decision and other decisions that this radical court, about how they've tried to destroy our environmental rules, our health and safety rules, our food and safety rules, you know, in the decision the other day, how they're destroying the Our ability to make sure we have clean air and clean water and healthy food and safe conditions. And our ability to address our existential threat, climate change. Geez, I could write this speech for him, Mr. Producer, knowing that he's a demagogue. And then again, I'll repeat, Roe v. Wade, women's reproductive rights. But what are you reproducing? Nothing, but nonetheless. A woman's right to choose. I'll hit all the hot buttons for all the... Members of his base. And now, now the court tells us that Donald Trump's above the law. Now the court tells us that Donald Trump is above the law. And then a lie like Sotomayor, because they both are very low on the IQ scale. And he'll say, he'll give some examples perhaps. So you can do this, you can do that, you can... 
You can lead an insurrection on Jan... That's what I'll do. You can lead an insurrection on January 6th to try and overthrow our government. And you won't be held to account. You better get ready. It's coming. People with dementia, when you abuse elders like this, one thing you can get them to do is to get angry. Doesn't take much to get Joe angry. Let me see if I, because I'm doing this on the fly. Let me see. So it'll be row. It'll be environmental rules, climate change. The court has undermined. Uh, it'll be student relief, if you can remember that one. It'll be all this stuff. Where he has acted unconstitutionally in his executive orders, and they have tried to push back. He will attack them for that. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Did you know one of the largest U.S. flags in the state of Georgia stands proudly in Pure Talk's parking lot? To honor that flag, Pure Talk is supporting America's Warrior Partnership in their mission to prevent veteran suicide. For our servicemen and women, the transition to civilian life can be very difficult, especially now. Access to housing, employment, and even their earned VA benefits can be very difficult. That's where America Warriors Partnership steps in by providing real support where and when our vets need it most. And you can help this noble cause when you switch to Pure Talk's 5G service and support this great charity. Through Flag Day, they'll match every dollar donated up to $50,000. Choose a wireless company that shares your values and puts you on America's most dependable 5G network for just $20 a month. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin. That's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N to make the switch. That's puretalk.com slash Levin for superior cell phone service. That's half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. And to help Pure Talk with vets in need. This is Mark Levin wishing you a happy 4th of July. Now back to the best of me. All right, let me try it again. So we can compare it to what Biden actually says. So he will use this speech. He will use this speech to tell us what to think about the Supreme Court. Here's what he will say. Ladies and gentlemen, this nation cannot survive another term of Donald Trump and his Supreme Court, the Trump Court. We'll give it a name. The Trump Court is a radical court. It is out of the mainstream. It's broken with precedent. It's broken with history. It's, a, it's an out-of-control court that is endangering our democracy because of the radicals that Donald Trump has put on this court. From Roe v. Wade and a woman's reproductive rights, clean air, clean water, food safety, and the existential threat, uh, threat of climate change, to vaccines that save lives, student debt relief, and now the rule of law itself the radical Trump court will go unchecked and, in fact, grow in numbers and power if we do not stop it in November. Now, he will obviously elaborate on that. This will be the gist of it. This will be the gist of it. And the press will shift the entire debate change reality to an unreality. The reality is Biden has dementia and he shouldn't even be president now, but they will change it. This is what they do. Always looking for an opportunity. That is what they will do. And I want you to understand that when Joe Biden does this, He's using the office of the presidency right now to destroy the office of the presidency. He's using the office of the presidency to destroy the character and the reputation of the United States Supreme Court. Joe Biden is about destroying his opponents. He's not about competing against them and 
debating them and having better ideas. Joe Biden is a hitman. That's why they love Jack Smith. So all of his unconstitutional executive orders that the court has said, wait a minute, you don't have the power to do this. He will turn them on their head and he will talk about what the court has done. You see in the, in the major decision where it says that you actually have judicial review rights against the federal bureaucracy. Federal bureaucracy is not going anywhere. It still has enormous power. It's not like it's suddenly gone. No, it's still all powerful. But in the end, you still have a right to say, will some independent body please take a look at this? That's all. Clean air, clean water, food safety are utterly unaffected. It's just that the bureaucracy doesn't run the country. The bureaucracy doesn't run the country. Student loans, well, he seized the power of the purse from Congress. He's been told twice by the Supreme Court, but he doesn't care. The vaccine's mandate. Well, the federal government didn't have the power to mandate it. They used an obscure regulation, just like Jack Smith on the law. They didn't have the power to mandate, but they did it anyway. And it affected thousands of people who lost their jobs or weren't hired. That's what he's going to do. Now, we'll see if I'm right or wrong. He's always late. I mean, he's supposed to be 745. They're going to try and keep him on time, I guess, to show you how absolutely smart he is. He's going to be angry. He's going to have his phrases. They're going to say, that's the Joe Biden we want. There he is. See, just had a bad debate night. What are you talking about? Was his staff? They gave him too much to memorize. Anybody would have a problem with that, even Ronald Reagan. No. Joe is great. He's on his game. So the, the effort to, I'll make a phrase, to re-propagandize will take place. Because they can't get rid of him. Jill's not going to allow it. The family's not going to allow it. He's not going to give up on his delegates. So that's the horse they have. And that's the horse they wanted. And so the debate, ladies and gentlemen, will be a distant memory starting after Joe Biden's speech. All the headlines. My God. That's the Joe Biden we know. See that? They'll bring on Fetterman. Now Fetterman is a character witness for Joe Biden. I don't know what that's all about. Of course, the difference is Fetterman had a stroke. Joe Biden has dementia. But details, details. This is the big move right now. This is the big play. The media is all set. The media are poised. They've been told what's going to happen. They hate Trump. They hate the court. They hate Alito. They hate Thomas. Oh, yeah, this is a big one. This is like a, it's more than a three for, it's a hundred for. And this he can do in his sleep. The angry Joe. The Joe who talks about saving America. How many ways he would save democracy. But for Trump. But for Trump. And the court. The radicals. Everybody's a radical. Everybody's an extremist. I'll be right back. Did you know one of the largest U.S. flags in the state of Georgia stands proudly in Pure Talk's parking lot? To honor that flag, Pure Talk is supporting America's warrior partnership in their mission to prevent veteran suicide. For our servicemen and women, the transition to civilian life can be very difficult, especially now. Access to housing, employment, and even their earned VA benefits can be very difficult. That's where America Warriors Partnership steps in by providing real support where and when our vets need it most. And you can help this noble cause when you switch to Pure Talk's 5G service and support this great charity. 
through Flag Day. They'll match every dollar donated up to $50,000. Choose a wireless company that shares your values and puts you on America's most dependable 5G network for just $20 a month. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin. That's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N to make the switch. That's puretalk.com slash Levin for superior cell phone service. That's half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. And to help Pure Talk with vets in need. You're listening to the best of the Mark Levin Show. Happy Independence Day. Remember, we will take the speech live that he's supposed to be giving at, what is it? Uh, let's see, 745, although the man's always late. Probably a bathroom check, but we don't know. Now, here's the thing. You have to ask yourselves, how stupid is half the country? They saw what you saw. Furthermore, you've seen it all along. Excuse me. Are they going to buy this? Unfortunately, a big percentage of the country will. It's going to be fear-mongering. Painting your opponent as a radical. An attack on the Supreme Court. An attack on their decisions. And keep something in mind. Many of these decisions were issued by the court to confront Joe Biden's Fascism, issuing executive orders on student loans, on vaccines, on uh, rent, and so forth and so on. But obviously the media won't, won't play it that way. You have no respect for the media, and they don't care. You want to know why? There's no connection to reality. There's no accountability. None. The more crazy ass they are, the more money they get on MSLSD and the constipated news number. Their ratings don't matter. Why? Because MSNBC is ultimately owned by Comcast. It's not a, uh, a profit center. CNN is owned by another massive mega corporation. They're, they're not a profit center. They don't care. They just don't. The New York Times is a blood-filled monstrous operation from day one. From day one. They certainly don't care. They're all for Biden and dictatorship and anything else. The Washington Post is at war with itself because the Marxist, Islamist, radical elements within the Post run the place. Because the leadership is weak. It's pathetic. Bezos and his uh, just brought a guy in from Britain. They just chased him off. Chased him off. So Biden hasn't changed. It's the propaganda machine that has switched gears. Mark my word on that. It hasn't happened yet. It's just going to happen. It's going to happen. I know these people. You know them too. You know I'm right. Why else would Biden give a speech about immunity today? Why else, other than to change the subject, to go on offense, to attack, 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 Trump, the court, the makeup of the court, but the court's done this term. He needs anything, something. It's interesting, at the end of my program on life, liberty, and living on Saturday, I believe it was Saturday or Sunday, but I believe it was Saturday in the last minute or so, I pointed out, these people will stop at nothing. So just be prepared to be prepared. Power is such a part of their soul to the extent they have a soul. And that includes the media, the manipulation, the control of the individual human being. They're not prepared to give up power. And they're not going to do it easily. So Biden wasn't going to go. They had their little family get-together at Camp David. Jill Biden pounded her fist on the table, no question. Word went out. Not only we're not leaving, we're going on the attack. And anybody who fights us or tries to stop us, we're going to smear the crap out of them. Even the closest advisors we've ever had. 
It was their fault, you see, not Joe. These governors who are thinking of stepping in, we will destroy your careers. So notice how fast they backed off. Democrats will only talk off the record. To the extent they'll talk at all. The columnists who wrote their pieces are now regretting it. Oh my God, what did I do? What did I do? My God. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Did you know one of the largest U.S. flags in the state of Georgia stands proudly in Pure Talk's parking lot? To honor that flag, Pure Talk is supporting America's warrior partnership in their mission to prevent veteran suicide. For our servicemen and women, the transition to civilian life can be very difficult, especially now. Access to housing, employment, and even their earned VA benefits can be very difficult. That's where America Warriors Partnership steps in by providing real support where and when our vets need it most. And you can help this noble cause when you switch to Pure Talk's 5G service and support this great charity. Through Flag Day, they'll match every dollar donated up to $50,000. Choose a wireless company that shares your values and puts you on America's most dependable 5G network for just $20 a month. Go to puretalk.com slash Levin. That's puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N to make the switch. That's puretalk.com slash Levin for superior cell phone service. That's half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. And to help Pure Talk with vets in need. This is Mark Levin wishing you a happy 4th of July. Now back to the best of me. I mean, look at all this free campaign media Biden gets. You know, CNN, MSLSD, the other reprobates, Donald Trump gives a speech, they cut it off. Even in a a victory speech when he effectively became the Republican nominee based on the delegate count, they cut him off. Can't be trusted. He has these incredible events, tens of thousands of people showing up. They don't cover it. I mean, Fox does, but nobody else. Good evening. Joe Biden is shuffling back from Camp David. Here we go. Here we go. It's an officer not only tests your judgment, perhaps even more importantly, it's an office that can test your character. Because you not only face moments when you need the courage to exercise the full power of the presidency, you also face moments where you need the wisdom to respect the limits of the power of the office of the presidency. This nation was founded on the principle that there are no kings in America. Each, each of us is equal before the law. No one, no one is above the law, not even the president of the United States. With today's Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity, that fundamentally changed. For all, for all practical purposes, today's decision almost certainly means that there are virtually no limits on what a president can do. Such a liar. It's a fundamentally new principle, and it's a dangerous precedent, because the power of the office will no longer be constrained by the law, even including the Supreme Court of the United States. Such a liar. The only limits will be self-imposed by the president alone. This decision today has continued the court's attack in recent years on a wide range of long-established come. legal Told principles you. in our nation. From gutting voting rights and civil rights, oh, yeah. to taking away a woman's right to choose, mm-hmm. to today's decision mm. that undermines the rule of law of this nation. Nearly four years ago, my predecessor mm-hmm. sent a violent mob to the U.S. Capitol mm. to stop the peaceful transfer of power. Liar. We all saw it with our own eyes. We sat there and watched it happen that day. Yeah, we saw you Attack Thursday. On the, police, the ransacking at the Capitol. Trump didn't do any of that. Down. He didn't encourage Trump's any of that. Nancy He's Post. not charged with any of that. Gallows erected to hang the vice president, Mike Pence. Yeah. I think it's fair to say it's one of the darkest days in the history of America. Now the man who sent that mob to the U.S. Capitol yeah. is facing potential criminal conviction for what happened that day. Mm. And the American people deserve to have an answer in the courts before the upcoming election. Now he gives up the, the jig there. No, the answer about what happened on January 6th, before they asked to vote again this year. Trump was now, in charge with any of, of that. Decision, that is highly, highly unlikely. 
It's a terrible disservice to the people of this nation. Mm. So now, now the American people have to do what the courts should have been willing to do, but will not. What's that? I like you. The American people have to render a judgment about Donald Trump's behavior. Mm -hmm. The American people must decide whether Donald Trump's assault on our democracy on January 6th makes him unfit for public office in the highest office in the land. The American people must decide if Trump's embrace of violence to preserve his power is acceptable. And what about all your anti-Semite river to the uh, sea pals? They want to entrust the president once again, the presidency, to Donald Trump. Mm. Now knowing he'll be even more emboldened to do whatever he pleases whenever he wants to do it. This is so bad. You know, at the outset of our nation, it was the character of George Washington, our first president, oh, to find the presidency. I thought he, he was a slaveholder. He limited, not absolute. And that power always resides with the people. <sighs> always. Your now, executive orders? Later, with today's Supreme Court decision. Once again, it will depend on the character of the men and women mm. who hold that presidency that are going to define the limits of the power of the presidency mm. because the law will no longer do it. What? I know I will respect the limits of the presidential powers I have you for have two not. and a half years. But any president, including Donald Trump, will now be free to ignore the law. Folks, he's such a liar. I concur with Justice Sotomayor's dissent today. Ah, the dumbest of the bunch. Here's what she said. She said, in every use of official power, the president is now a king above the law. With fear for our democracy, I dissent. Uh, End of quote. So should the American people dissent. I mm -hmm. dissent. May God bless you all. And may God help preserve our Okay, democracy. America, let me, let me ask you a question. We have to take a break very soon. Well, wait a minute. Oh, I've got six minutes. Good. Here we are. Well, I want to hear the questions. Oh, he walked away? No, oh, he looks like he's answering questions, Rich. No? No, no, you're right. He walked away. I'm behind. Okay, he didn't answer any questions. <coughs> Sorry, COVID. You know, that wasn't as bad as it could have been, Mr. Producer. You know that? But I hit all the points that he raised, didn't I? The court, Trump, Roe v. Wade. Ladies and gentlemen, that decision does not give a president carte blanche. He is lying intentionally. He is lying through his teeth. All six of them. If it did, I would tell you so. The reason Joe Biden was not indicted by special counsel her was not simply because of his dementia. It is because the position of the United States Department of Justice, as I opened the program with, and I did it purposely, for over half a century has been you cannot indict a sitting president. That's been the position. And special counsel her cited it. The Supreme Court has done nothing new. It has stopped Jack Smith from breaking from that half-century tradition. And then they say, okay, you cannot indict a sitting president for his official duties. But, ladies and gentlemen, official duties don't include sending SEAL Team 6 to assassinate your political rival. And why they keep trashing SEAL Team 6, I don't know. So if a president does something of that sort... Well, what happened is they can be indicted. It would go in front of a district judge, and a district judge would hold a hearing to make a determination if the act was official or not. That's what the court did today. He, the court didn't say a president can do whatever he wants. And so, of course, he cites the dumbest of the justices because he was, he's the dumbest of the presidents, having graduated near the bottom of his class. Her opinion was so absurd, so reckless, so political. It showed no knowledge at all of what they were even talking about. And, of course, the other two jump in with her. 
But she wrote it. And understand what I'm saying. President doesn't have carte blanche power. The problem here is a prosecutor with carte blanche power, and the court said no. That's what happened. So the only danger, and by the way, do you notice in this statement, Biden gave it up? How did he give it up? The people have a right to know before the election. There it is. That should be the headline, America. The people have the right to know before the election. Look, it's no coincidence that his attorney general, that his prosecutor, that the Democrat prosecutors, whatever form, whatever jurisdiction they're in, are in a hurry to get this done quickly. And he just said the American people have the right to know about January 6th before the election. The right to know what? The right to know what? I'll tell you what you know right now. He didn't commit insurrection and wasn't charged with it. He didn't commit sedition or conspiracy. He wasn't charged with it. So we know right now that he didn't do effectively what Joe Biden just said he did. What he just said he did. So... Joe Biden, you have to understand, is a demagogue. He is a liar. He's pathological. I've done shows on this on Fox, on Blaze, and here. He lies and lies and lies. President Trump calls him a lying machine. That's exactly what he is. But so are the media. So are the media. This is also intended to intimidate the federal judge in South Florida. You dare to follow the rules. Go by the book. Apply the Constitution. You will be treated the same way. And look how they do it. The whole Marxist propaganda operation. Trump's not above the law. Here's the truth. In the end, Trump is still not out of the woods. Because this Judge Chunkin could still twist the facts, twist the law on some of these issues and say, yes, I've concluded that those were private, not presidential. It's the truth. But what did he just do there? What did he do there, Mr. Producer? Not only trying to change the subject, he just told that federal district judge what to do, did he not? I'm the first one raising these points. You'll hear them tomorrow. You'll hear them tonight on our favorite cable network and elsewhere. But I want you to listen to me. Joe Biden just told Judge Chunkin, Prosecutor Smith, and Merrick Garland what he expects them to do. To keep fighting and fighting and fighting on this. So there could be some kind of resolution before the election. May not be able to pull it off, but they got their marching orders just now. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. This is the best of the Mark Levin Show. Happy Independence Day. That's pretty close, wasn't I, Mr. Producer? Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Okay, when we say things here, it really moves through the body politic. Rush used to call it the echo chamber. He was right. It's moving through now. That's good. And my next point was, just posted it, but just spoke, but I'm going to underscore it. Joe Biden just said that we had a right to know Trump's role before the election on January 6th. First of all, I thought he already told us what Trump's role is, because he lies, you know. But that aside, the incoherence aside... 
We have a right to know before the election. So he's always been behind it. But even more, that is a message to Jack Smith, to Merrick Garland, to Judge Chunkin, anybody in the feeding chain. That is a message. Don't stop. We've had some legal analysts out there, some who I know, who keep saying, well, you know, Smith can still take up one or two of these cases, or another guy says, well, maybe, maybe they, you know, they have an argument that there was, in fact, some effort through a document or a phone call to make a change or something like that. In other words, some colorable or facial argument that they can be made so Smith can still go forward. Now, if Judge Chunkin, I mean, it would even be hard for her to do it, but I guess it's possible. I mean, a Stalinist star chamber is a Stalinist star star chamber, right? So the ball will be back in her court. She just got her marching orders from the president of the United States, her president, the Democrat president, the man who was vice president when she was appointed to the court, picked out of obscurity. Chunkin was just told, listen, we need to resolve this before the election. That's what he said. Jack Smith. Stay on it, baby. Push harder than before. We need this resolved. The people have a right to know. Before the did he not? He said it. That the people have a right to know before the election. Same with Garland. He's saying intensify the lawfare. Don't surrender it. This is all I've got. I don't have anything else. I got to keep up the convicted felon. I got to keep up the dictator that he has the power to order the execution. Look how sick this is, by the way. They call crazy. Look how nuts Sotomayor is. Look what a nut job she is. And we're all supposed to play along. Oh, yeah, yeah. What if he does order that? That would be in his official duties. Really? The official duty of a president to assassinate his opponent? That's no more legitimate than a president having his regime try and jail his opponent. Don't you think, Mr. Producer? Now, if Joe Biden is right, and he's not, but if Joe Biden is right, and he's not, then he should be subjected to prosecution. You notice whenever you bring that, you're talking about retribution? <sighs> retribution. Hey, did the crime, he does the time. The rule applies. If it's a new rule, it applies to him too. So what the court just ruled applies to Joe Biden when he's out. That is, if there's a case made against Joe Biden for the slaughter, the mayhem, the rape, the murder, the property damage on the southern border, any other part of the country for that matter. It doesn't have to be the southern border. We saw in Maryland, in New York, in Georgia, all around the country. From his policies in violating our immigration laws. Any future administration, God willing, the Trump administration looks at that and says, wait a minute. That wasn't part of his official duties. They would have to bring the case to the district court. And the district court would have to have some kind of a hearing or mini trial or something. Some kind of a a, a method to get evidentiary information to make a rational, constitutionally based decision with the Supreme Court decision behind them. The court would then have to make a judgment. So there's judicial review. It's amazing. There's judicial review where there shouldn't be any. The courts get involved in all kinds of crap. And here, the court says to the district court, look, you can't just rubber stamp what a prosecutor says. There's got to be some kind of actual review. It's called judicial review. My God! What a dangerous thing! Oh, my Lord! Now Trump can do whatever he wants to do. So basically what Biden's saying, look, you either elect me, A good-for-nothing, demented crook. Or Hitler. Now, what are you going to do? It's Hitler or me. That's what he's trying to do. That's what 
the Joy Reeds, the Mika Blazinskis, the Andrea Met. And by the way, have you looked at all their face? Look at, look at this uh, Andrea Mitchell's face. It, it looks more sagging than usual. May I say that, Mr. Producer? She must have gone to the same surgeon as Pelosi, no question about it. By the way, is Pelosi like in stage three or four dementia now? You folks watching her? I mean, I feel like we have a... Uh, no, I better not say that. So, here we spend time meticulously going over the Constitution, the facts, the rule of law, history... And here comes Biden, the blunderbust, setting another match. This is the same Biden who lied. Who lied and said, we're not withholding weapons from Israel. Did you see this one? Michael McCall, the chairman of the House Armed Services Committee, or whatever they call themselves. He was on the Sunday show. I don't know that we have that, do we, Rich? Listen to this, just to prove my point. Cut 21, go. Are we able to assist Israel if that turns into a whole nother front for them with Hezbollah, which is much better equipped and armed, and will we? Well, yes, we can. Uh, we have the capacity. We did so when Iran launched their rockets mm-hmm. into Israel. Remember that? 99% were uh, taken out. They, they were not effective. But what uh, about General Brown, though, saying he doesn't think we can give that same level of help if Hezbollah starts? Well, I, I respect him, uh, General Brown. I know him. But the fact is, we're not helping them. In fact... This is uh, what is uh, most disturbing to me, is that we're withholding weapon systems that I have signed off on and Congress has appropriated with the intent of sending those weapons to Israel. Remember the supplemental? Mm -hmm. They are effectively withholding seven weapon systems. I can't get into the details. Uh, That is not helping Israel. Not seven weapons, seven, seven weapons systems. He says he signed off on it. There's a convoluted process of sign-offs. He's one of them, the chairman of that committee. He signed off on it. The speaker signed off. They've all signed off. But it's in the bureaucracy where these things go to die. Tom Cotton wrote a letter. He's explained this in detail. Michael Duran in the tablet explained this in detail, that you need to have a president treat these as an emergency in order to cut through all the bureaucratic red tape. And starting in January, Biden stopped treating them as emergencies. And so they're stuck. This is intentional. Now, he lies to Israel. He lies about Netanyahu. He lies to you and me. He lies about everything. And there he is tonight. The president is king. He can do whatever he wants. You want to know the irony of all this? You guys are smart. You'll understand where I'm going with this. Joe Biden has had four executive orders and one major EPA regulation stopped by the U.S. Supreme Court. He defied the court on the student loans. So you've actually had a court that stopped Joe Biden in four instances, five involving regulations. There's more on various court dockets. So if Joe Biden actually believes that a president shouldn't be a dictator, why did he do those things? And if Joe Biden actually believes that a president has all the power in the world, why did the court say no? It's the court that said you don't. You see what I'm saying? His rhetoric and his actions don't match. I'm sure that'll be on CNN with Jake Tapper and Dana Bash. Or maybe when, uh, what's her name, Andrea Mitchell lifts her face off the floor. I'm sure she'll, uh, she'll realize that. No, they won't. The, the, the idiocy of his comments. But look at the rhetoric from the media. We've never had such a pathetically stupid and ideological media like this. It's been bad in the past at times. This is unacceptable. 
Joe Biden's back, baby. He's back. Did you hear that? B? He was good. Wait, you're going to see it on the morning shows? Those of you foolish enough to watch these late shows on TV? My wife gets so mad at me. I watch stuff like... Uh, what do I watch? The Jewelry Channel, Mr. Producer. You know, with the wheel going round and round and round. I like that. I can't help it. it takes my mind off stuff. Or the pickers guys, I like that. Not the nose pickers, you know what I mean. The pickers, I like those guys. I like the uh, Ion Channel. They're going to take the Reagans away from us. This drives me nuts, CBS. What a great cop show. Cops should be upset all over the country and telling CBS. Blue Bloods is a great, great show. As are most of the other ones they have. Chicago PD, Chicago Fire... Ah, FBI. That's a good one. That's a good one, too. They're all pro-law enforcement. I mean, they don't go crazy, but they're pro-law enforcement. It's not a lot of the trash you see in other channels and so on. They're good, wholesome, truthful, realistic programs. And Blue Bloods, of course, the family's called Reagan, so that drives the libs nuts. And the actors are solid. They're very, very good actors. We love this show. My wife and I will watch it all the time. Chicago PD. <laughs> That's a hoot, that show. I forget the name of the guy who's the head of the intelligence unit. Oh, man, is that guy cool? He is tough. And I like the, uh, I don't know what they call him, the captain, the fire chief. It's a black gentleman. I think he originally was an actor in England in uh, Chicago Fire. That guy is great. He's absolutely terrific. And then, of course, FBI. I love that whole cast. I like all the cast. They're great shows. So I'll do that. You know, I, th- there's a time when you... If you listen to Biden enough, you'll become like Biden. You understand what I'm saying? You listen to Schumer enough... You have to take a shower all the time. You, you'll, you'll feel so grotesque about yourself. If you watch Nancy Pelosi enough, you'll pick up the same ticks that she has. You know, you got to be careful. You know how they say people look like their dogs? You ever, you ever hear that, Mr. Producer? Well, if you listen to these human dogs or watch them long enough, you know, they'll have an impact on you. Negative impact, but they'll have an impact on you. So sometimes you got to step away. Just don't ever step away from me. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You're listening to the best of the Mark Levin Show. Happy Independence Day. All right, let me try this. He talks about January 6th. Some of you are too young, so let me remind you. Remember the race riots? <coughs> Excuse me. Gotta love this. Thank you, China. This COVID. Remember the race riots, 60s and into the 70s? Remember that? Remember the segregationists and the racists who stood in the schoolhouse doors to prevent little black kids from going to school with little white kids? You remember that? You remember certain senators? Certain senators who were segregationists and racists? Talk about black people as non-human. Remember that? Well, did you know Joe Biden was part of that? Did you know? Did you know Joe Biden befriended those men? And he didn't just befriend them when he became a senator in 1973. He befriended them all through the 1970s. Did you know that? Did you know that? Yes. Did you know that in 1993 he wrote a law in 1994? They passed it. Which targeted black communities, quote unquote, super predators, his word. Did you know that? Denounced by the NAACP, as was his opposition to school integration. Did you know that? 
He talks about January 6th. Do you know what's going on at the southern border? Of course you do. Women are being raped and sold into sex slavery. Children are being raped and sold into pornography. 85,000 children are missing. They don't know where they are. I can only imagine. Fentanyl coming over the border. 100,000 American deaths every year, but he's worried about Gaza. You familiar with that? But he wants you to fear Trump. Fear what? A good economy, a secure border, a strong military, no wars overseas? That's what you had. You didn't have a dictator. You didn't have a rogue president. You had none of those things. They're trying to create a caricature. They're trying to create a narrative, a fiction. Because their candidate is a slug. And they're going to double, triple, quadruple down. Because they need to carry him across the finish line. He gave out his order, and I'll play it to you again. That one little piece after the bottom of the hour. He gave out his order to Jack Smith. A hack. Judge Chunkin, a hack. Merrick Garland, a hack. He gave out his order tonight. As he does all the time. But this time, he was desperate. Tonight, he attacked the U.S. Supreme Court. Constantly trying to undermine the integrity of the court. Tonight, his militia in the Congress, led by former Westchester County resident, bartender, radical leftist Marxist, AOC, wants to impeach the Supreme Court. She's got the mind of a cucumber. And there's Schumer. Davening. uh, Davening up and down with his stupid ass comments. Oh, only a half hour left. If I were you, I wouldn't miss it. I'll be right back. This is Mark Levin wishing you a happy 4th of July. Now back to the best of me. I saw Bill Barr on uh, Fox this evening with Neil Cavuto. Neil was really uh, slicing into him, and I thought he did a very good job, actually. Look, I call him as I see him. And I thought he did a very good job, Bill Barr. Um... And I hope he'll keep that up, because we really are facing it now. We really are. The unprecedented conviction of President Trump, and you can see this ongoing lawfare, uncharted territory, the Supreme Court, they didn't give a president dictatorial powers. They held the status quo, pretty much, is what they do, and then they said, look, President's never been indicted before, even a former president. So if you're going to do that, you have to have at least a minimum standard. Uh, He's presumed to have acted officially. Now, provide your evidence before you you can go any further to a trial judge. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! (laughs) And Sotomayor. She's smoking something? That's one of the most humiliating, embarrassing childish, emotional, stupid opinions I've ever read. Ever. Now, what am I talking about when I say when I say that uh, Joe Biden sent the word out today during his little speech. He sent message to uh, Jack Smith, Judge Chunkin, Merrick Garland, And here it is. Go. I think it's fair to say it's one of the darkest days in the history of America. Now the man who sent that mob to the U.S. Capitol is facing potential criminal conviction for what happened that day. And the American people deserve to have an answer in the courts before the upcoming election. Stop there. He's telling the court 
The American people, well, you heard him, deserve to have an answer before the election. He's telling Judge Chunkin, she's the court. The American people need this taken care of before the election. We did it in Manhattan. Now we need to do it in Washington. You can do this. I want you to listen to this again. Nobody's picking up on this, of course. They will tomorrow. Start at the top, Mr. Producer. Go. I think it's fair to say it's one of the darkest days in the history of America. Now the man who sent that mob to the U.S. Capitol is facing potential criminal conviction for what happened that day. And the American people deserve to have an answer in the courts before the upcoming election. Mm. That's right, Judge. You're the judge. So on the one hand, he attacks the Supreme Court. Here's the thing. The media is such liars. The Supreme Court, in the case overturning the Chevron Doctrine, which said, look, people can bring matters to the judiciary for judicial review, They didn't say the bureaucracy stops doing what bureaucracies do. They just said now there's going to be an independent arbiter who can look at it. Put yourself in that position. Federal government says, you know that pond in your backyard? Yes, that's navigable waters under the Constitution, and we're going to regulate it. No, it's not. We said it is. I'm going to sue you. Who cares? We get to make the final decision. Court said, no, no, we got to abandon that. Joe Biden's very upset with that decision. But he talks about his opposition to dictatorships and his support for democracy. Joe Biden sees the power of the power of the purse from the House of Representatives. Supreme Court said, you can't do that. You're not a dictator. Then he says, watch me. Yes, I can. And he does it. Supreme Court said, the CDC doesn't have the power to compel large corporations, 100 or more employees, to force their employees to get vaccinated. Joe Biden said it did. The court said no, it doesn't. Joe Biden said through an OSHA regulation, unbelievably, that he had the power to regulate the price of rent when he took over the presidency. Supreme Court said, no, you don't. That's four times. Supreme Court told the EPA, you don't have the power to do what you're doing when it comes to eliminating the combustion engine the way you are. So now they're going around it a different way through the cafe standards. But that aside, so it's this court, which he he calls a radical court. It's this court that is trying to prevent Joe Biden from being a dictator. We now have another federal court, excuse me. It's COVID, I'm working on it. We now have another federal court that said the Title IX regulations put out at the direction of the White House basically destroying women's sports. Remember, Title IX was created to strengthen, to fund, to embrace, to promote women's sports. Now they're destroying it. For the transgender community, I guess. Some political reasons. Court said, you don't have the power to do that. Joe Biden has violated every known immigration law. Really. With his various executive orders. But he says he's opposed to dictatorships. Joe Biden is violating the Empowerment Act by preventing these seven military systems from being sent to Israel despite the votes of Congress. I mean, I can go down the list. This guy's the biggest dictator we've had since Franklin Roosevelt. And remember, he wants to do more than Franklin Roosevelt. That's what the phony historians told him. You can be Roosevelt. You can be bigger. Go big. Go big. And then you have uh, Elizabeth Warren. Who's a Maoist. You can check Google. Google the headlines. Telling Biden, rule by executive order. Do it, do it, do it. You have Jamie Raskin, 
son of a longtime Stalinist, telling Joe Biden, you can use the 14th Amendment, sorry, to get around the power of the purse and raise the debt on your own. They just lie. That's what he said. They attach their constitutionalists. So these people want to eliminate your First Amendment rights, your Second Amendment rights, your Fourth, Fifth, Sixth, Eighth Amendment rights, your Fourteenth Amendment rights, depending on who you are. They've destroyed the Commerce Clause. They don't believe in separation of powers. They support the unconstitutional appointment of a rogue prosecutor. I mean, I can go on and on. They tell you the Constitution is written by white slaveholders in order to enshrine their superiority position over everybody else. They tell you that uh, we ought to pull the monuments down, that these men were no damn good, and then they wave around the Constitution. See, we're upholding the Constitution. It's Trump who wants to destroy it. They change our history, our founding wasn't in 1776, some nonsense about 1619. The New York Times is pushing it out. CRT is an anti-American, Marxist, racist ideology spread through our colleges and universities and now into our public schools. But we support democracy. We support the Constitution. No, they don't. And then you have Joe Biden, the idiot. The dumb fool. The dumb fool. He doesn't even understand what he's saying. It doesn't matter because nobody else does either, I guess. But my point is the dumb fool is saying things that apply to him. In other words, you get immunity? Hey, dumbass. You could have been prosecuted, you jerk, if you didn't have presidential immunity. Right, Mr. Producer? I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. You're listening to the best of the Mark Levin Show. Happy Independence Day. The New York Slimes, Donald J. Trump, began an effort on Monday to throw out his recent criminal conviction in Manhattan and postpone his upcoming sentencing, citing a new Supreme Court ruling that granted him broad immunity from prosecution for official actions he took as president, according to a person with knowledge of the matter. Now, I know people like to hear that. That's not exactly what the court did. Granting him broad immunity. Presidents have immunity, always have, for their official actions. Only now, given the lawfare practiced by this diabolical regime, had the court intervened. He didn't add anything. He didn't take anything away. It had to create a standard to address what was being done. That's it. In a letter to the judge overseeing the case, Mr. Trump's lawyers sought permission, you got to have permission, to file a motion to set aside the verdict. Doing so just hours after the Supreme Court issued its landmark ruling involving one of Mr. Trump's other criminal cases. The letter will not be public until Tuesday at the earliest, after which prosecutors will have a chance to respond. This guy, Mershon, we'll see what he does. I don't think he gives a damn who rules what. I really don't. I don't think he gives a damn who rules what. I think at the end, they're going to have to try a writ. The kind of writ that I talked about at length, that I've written about, that my buddy Arthur Ferguson has written about, to get the matter to the court. Unfortunately, the window is closing. Uh, The court is now going on vacation. I just don't trust this appellate process in New York. Even if they come to eventually the right conclusion, it'll be too late. So we'll see what happens. At some point, there will be a discussion, should President Trump be President Trump again, God willing, for whether a president can pardon himself on state charges. My answer, and I don't even think it's complicated, is absolutely yes, for the same reason he can do so on federal indictment charges. Should that have happened? Uh, that is indicting a president. Number one, you're not to. Number two, if you do, can he pardon himself? My answer is yes. 
There's no, it's, it's plenary power. There's no limits on it. But that's a state issue, Mark. Federalism. Excuse me. I, I, it always cracks me up when people get federalism backwards, particularly professors and former prosecutors, these grifters on CNN and MSNBC. It's very frustrating to me. That's not federalism. That's like reverse federalism. If a state indictment or here we have sentencing issues interfere with a president of the United States performing his duties. I don't care when it occurred. He's elected president. The case occurred when they knew he was running for president. They didn't stop it and put it as a case until after the election. They wanted to affect the election. They did. Congratulations. But he still got elected. The same basis, the same basis that a president has for pardoning himself under a federal indictment, the same basis for not bringing one while he's president, is the same basis that can be used, in my view, for pardoning himself against a state indictment. You can't allow a state prosecutor, an acting state prosecutor, to decapitate the federal executive branch. More another day. Lots today. Thanks for listening. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel, our truckers, our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and Israel. We have your back, regardless of Biden. Folks, stick with the truth. Screw the media. See you tomorrow. <laughs>